yes so we're gonna be live streaming today um we're gonna be talking about one championship 166 their pay-per-view stream um or i'm not sure really if it's pay-per-view actually i should probably look at that but i'm gonna be talking about 166 um with Anatoly Malikin trying to become a three division world champion. He is the heavyweight world champion for one championship, the light heavyweight world champion for one championship. And he's having a rematch with Rainier de Ritter, the former light heavyweight champion in one championship, whom he just beat at light heavyweight. Um, and he's having this rematch with de Ritter at middleweight. Now, very interesting thing because one championship really doesn't have weight cuts right so they do hydration tests where they take your your piss right your urine and they see the hydration levels of your urine now of course there's still ways to cheat the system there's still ways to have extra weight while you're you're stepping on that scale and, and things like that or uh, after you step on the scale to add extra weight but they also monitor how much weight you're gaining um between the weigh-ins and the fight right so it's very interesting that Anatoly Malikin actually made middleweight. I'm very surprised that he did. I mean, you know, I gotta, I gotta give it up to him because I really didn't think it was gonna happen. I thought that he was way too big. I mean, he, he was a heavyweight, knocking out heavyweights like it was nothing. Um, he won the light heavyweight championship by brutalizing Rainier de Ritter in their first fight. I mean, Rainier couldn't find any entries for his shots. Uh, Anatoly Malikin has good uh, anti-wrestling and good offensive wrestling as well. And then he has just tremendous power in his hands. So I really didn't think that this brick and behemoth of a guy was going to be able to step down to middleweight with no water loss and go ahead and make weight. But, you know, he did. I have to give it up to him. I mean, it's a incredible feat. And the fight's on. So that's not the only fight that we have for one championship. And guys, I'm going to get to Alex Pereira and his plans for UFC 301 and Alexandria Pantosha's plans for UFC 301. But first, I'm going to give you guys the preview of one 166 because it is taking place tomorrow morning. So now let's go ahead and get deeper onto the card, right? So guys, we're going to go ahead and start talking about 166. We already discussed Anatoly Malikin versus Rainier de Ritter. And now we get into the co-main event with Tang Kai versus Tan Lee. I'm only going to go over the fights that I'm really interested in because, of course, I want you guys to watch the full one championship cards if you do choose to do so. Um, and I'm very confident that you'll be pleased with them. But the point of these live streams every Thursday, yes, we are live streaming now every Thursday. But the point of these is to get you acquainted with one championship while also giving you guys some time to ask me um, questions about whatever's going on in the MMA community. So, Tenkai versus Don Lee. This is also a rematch. Uh, Tenkai, man, he's been undefeated since he got into one championship. I believe he's 7-0 and uh, with four of those wins coming by finish. The dude has very crisp boxing, as we saw in their first fight. He is very patient and very accurate with his boxing as well. And then he has a hell of hell of a kicking game as well so he's just an all-around complete striker um i think the one thing we don't see from him is like a dominant wrestling top game but he does have slick uh timing on his takedowns and he can stay on top for against someone who who doesn't have the grappling of a ton lead but I guess Tanley, we saw that he didn't really want to engage in the grappling, and we all know why, because Tanley has world-class jiu-jitsu. Um, if you don't know who Tanley is, he's a multiple organization world champion. I believe he was a world champion in Bellator, as well as won championship before Tenkai got here. And Tanley, he's known for his uh, taekwondo style, so he has his hands down, a lot of roundhouse and, and spinning kicks. But he also has a very legitimate ground game, not just a ground game, but leg locks as well. So he's he's up to date as far as jiu-jitsu goes. And um, if you are a guy who mainly watches the UFC, then another reason, another way you can uh, know of Tang Tan Lee or, or know how good he is is that 
Corey Sanhagen uses him in his camp. They are uh, very close training partners. And Corey Sanhagen even mentioned the fact that when he was preparing for Umar Namagamedov, a guy who uses a little bit of uh, those fancier kicks into his takedown entries, that Tanley, there wasn't really a better person than Tanley to go with uh, as far as the high gr level ground game look as well. Now, Tanley's coming off of a first round finish to where, man, he's, he's carrying a lot of momentum into this. I, you know, I, as everyone does, right? You're coming off of a loss against Tenkai, five round unanimous decision loss. After knocking out Gary Tone and Martin win, um, Ryogo Takahashi. I mean, the dude Tan Lee was just murdering everybody in one championship. And uh, we didn't know if there was any competition for him. But Tang Kai came along, uh, China, China's first champion in one championship, and uh, came around and beat him. Then he knocked out or uh, submitted Ilya Freymanov which was a good win for him, and you can see the confidence kind of restored now. He's not the youngest of the bunch, right? He's 38 years old. Um, he's not, I wouldn't say in his prime, but at the end of the day, he's only had one loss in the last I don't, however many years, and um, you can't really judge him off of that right now. Tankai is in his prime at 27 years old. He's just a destroyer of, of destroyers, man. He could, He's... A knockout artist we already talked about his boxing and in the first fight that's kind of uh the the route he took in order to beat Tan Lee right he used that patient boxing he caught Tan Lee whenever he was trying to come in um with his low hands because I think he was a little bit undisciplined in his boxing exchanges with Tenkai um but another thing Tenkai was able to do was pick apart Tan Lee's legs so I'm interested to see how the little bit of a Muay Thai base of uh, Tenkai does with the Taekwondo base of Tan Li. Uh, so that's for the featherweight MMA world champion. And of course, uh, they, like I said, there is no water cuts. So we'll be at 155 pound bout. Next up, this is a three world, uh, three world title championship card. Uh, so there are three world titles on the line. Jared Brooks is taking on Joshua Paziev. Now, all three of these, uniquely enough, are rematches. Uh, Jared Brooks is a former UFC fighter. He had he actually had a lot of success in the UFC. Um, he had a split decision loss to Davidson Figueredo. Many people thought he won. Um, he had a lot of success against Davidson Figueredo. After that, he ended up knocking himself out via slam in the UFC. And then uh, after that, he had a split decision win and was cut for some reason after that, right? But um, more of the story, he was fighting up a weight class at flyweight. This is actually a strawweight MMA world championship. So they are fighting at 125, but this is obviously with no water cut, right? And uh, he's going against a guy whom he took the belt from, Joshua Pazio, who was the long-reigning champion at one championship. I mean, if you, if you want to look... A little bit at who Joshua Pazio is and you go into his last fights for one championship I mean he only has three losses and two of them are by decision now Joshua Pazio has a very very slick grappling I mean he's had some very slick submissions he has very good timing on his takedowns the last uh, person he beat he beat Mansur Malachiev and he beat him a wrestler by taking him down right um very good time takedowns he had uh, really good leg kicks in that fight he ended up hurting uh Mansoor's perennial nerve if those of you don't who don't know who that is that's where you get that drop foot you lose control of your foot and things like that um and it kind of threw him off a little bit but he still ended up getting the unanimous decision win over the number one ranked contender at the time and uh this is after losing his belt to jared brooks jared brooks did beat him uh, in a unanimous decision victory, but of course, like I said, Joshua Pazio was the long reigning champion at uh, at strawweight in one championship, and so him getting this rematch with Jared Brooks, you know, it could like I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it could go either way, man. They're both very explosive people, but it was a dominant victory for Jared Brooks last time, man. I mean, he looked more. 
he just looked faster in the boxing exchanges. But it all came after he was able to take Joshua Pazio down in that first round. And uh, Joshua tried getting up a few times and then dropping onto a guillotine, which I think really is what set him behind as far as cardio is concerned. And um, after that kind of set him behind, he I don't think he ever really recovered. That's why he looked maybe a little bit slower than um, Jared Brooks. But Jared Brooks was just very fast in the boxing exchanges, was out striking Passio, was out grappling Passio. And just looked ahead of him. So I'm very interested. And he also is on an eight fight unbeaten streak. So he's world class. There's no doubt about it. Both of these fighters are world class. And I'm super excited for this fight. Um, as far as who I think is going to win this one. Man for these all three of these world title fights. I, I got Ant Anatoly Malikin. Yes he's cutting a lot of weight. I'm sure. But he looks shredded man. If you, you go and look at those weigh in pictures man. He looks shredded. Let me actually go ahead and pull that up. Anatoly Malikin weighing. So, this is how he looks at heavyweight, right? You can see that he has a little bit of, you know, chunkiness at, on him, right? However, we look at one 166 weighing. And he looks pretty shredded, man. I mean, you can't really doubt it, can you? Look at this. Right? So he makes weight. He looks shredded. Yeah, it didn't go too well for Rene the first time around. He tried to use his grappling. It didn't really work that well. He, he's not really a striker. He looks just like off balance and shit like that. So going against Alan, and I told him I like it, man. The dude's just terrifying. Right, so like I said, I'm choosing Anatoly in this one. I'm, I'm true. I will be choosing Tank High as well. I think he's just crisper. I think Tan Lee is very good and exciting to watch. Always a fun fighter to watch. But man, at 38 years old, going against this 27 year old who just beat you in a unanimous decision, he just looked to be the cleaner fighter and a cleaner technician on the feet. It was a hard time trying to get him down to the ground. Yeah, I'm taking Tank Kai as well. And then. I'm also going to go with the upset, though, in uh, this third fight with Joshua Passio. I'm going with the upset. Joshua Passio, he adapted. After that first round, he stopped trying to drop on those guillotines because Jared Brooks has never been submitted in his career. Went almost the full length of distance uh, with Mikey Musumeci in a grappling match. Ended up getting submitted, of course. But the point of the matter uh, is that it's very hard to submit Jared Brooks. It wasn't a good idea to drop on guillotines, and I feel like that initial first round is actually what drained Joshua Passio of his gas tank and made him seem a little bit slower than Jared Brooks. Now, could I be wrong? Could uh, Jared Brooks just come strong? Yes, but I think Joshua Passio is going to make the adjustments. He trains at a very good team over in Team Lakai. He has very slick grappling transitions. I feel like the wrestler will be a consistent scramble as long as he doesn't drop on any guillotines. And I feel like if he plays his cards right with his kicking game, if he kicks the calf of Jared Brooks, if he goes up to the head after he set it up, I think I could see him walking away with a knockout victory, actually, in this one. So, moving on to uh, the second to last fight I want to talk about in this one, Arjan Boulard. He is the former heavyweight champion for one championship in heavyweight. Um, and then we also have Amir Alakbari. They both lost to Anatoly Malikin. They both lost via knockout if I'm not mistaken I believe Anatoly knocked both of them out yeah Anatoly knocks out everyone I mean look at this Jesus Christ five wins five knockouts 100% finish rate and this is just and he has six minutes of fight time in five fights Jesus Christ Anatoly Malikin is an animal but back to who we were talking about Arjan Buller he represents Indian wrestling I mean, he's going to try and get the fight to the ground. His, his boxing is a little bit rock'em, sock'em robots. Uh, if he could get this one on the ground, I think he could have a, a very good shot at winning. But Amir Alakbari, he's the dude just uh, submitted Justin Johnson uh, or Johnson. He beat up Brandon Vero pretty bad. That was the first fight I actually watched of him. 
Um, and yeah, I think to be honest, he he seems very motivated to get back to Anatoly Malaika. He's been calling him out in his last every fight <laughs> since he's been winning. He's been on a three fight win streak. Um, and he really wants that Anatoly Malaika. I think he's more motivated than Arjan. I think Arjan kind of feels like he made it in the uh, Indian MMA community, and um, he's, I don't know if he's fighting for too much, so I'm going to go with Amir Alakbari for that one. I think he'll catch him in a short range boxing exchange. It's heavyweight MMA, first person to land. I feel like it's going to be the one who uh, is going to win this one. Um, and moving on to the last fight, I want to break down Osama Almarwa. So he's making his one championship return after his loss to uh, Mikey Musumeci. He's one of the ones who got his knee kind of torn apart, um, didn't tap. Uh, Mikey Musumeci, this is actually the one championship's first event in the U.S. Mikey Musumeci ended up submitting him via rear naked choke, going against a guy, Kleber Souza, who actually beat Mikey Musumeci in a Who's Number One match. So, this guy, and he passed Mikey Musumeci's guard. This is, they're setting the winner of this up for the next uh, shot at Mikey Musumeci. And this is very interesting what one championship is doing. They're, they're so good for the grappling world. They want to put on exciting grappling matches. They're bringing the, uh, just the MMA audience to uh, grappling or the martial arts audience to grappling. And I love what they're doing for submission grappling. These are two of some of the best uh, flyaway submission grapplers on the planet. Um, one has beaten Mikey Musumeci. One has lost to Mikey Musumeci, and they're going to compete. Um, as far as who wins, I think Kleber Souza probably gets this, this one done, and we're going to see a rematch between him and Mikey Musumeci, in which Mikey, he gets to prove himself, and this is going to be an interesting one because we, we know it's against someone who can beat him like he has done before. Um, so, guys, that's it for one championship 166 that is all i wanted to talk about as far as that is concerned um i appreciate you guys for tuning into the live stream if you did that or if you're watching this afterwards i appreciate you guys for tuning into the video but now i want to talk about alex Pereira. um 